I need somebody else to help me out, uh, and I, it would be great if they were a guy and they could beat me up. So somebody that's bigger than me, brother, your name is... Come on down, your next contestant on Jared's About to Embarrass You. <laughs> Round of applause for John, was it? Yeah. Joe? So as Joe comes up, yeah. Jeff, I was, I was way off. Um, I'm praying for the gift of interpretation, as I can understand the Canadians and the Canadians can understand the Australian. Um, if you were to put money on Jeff and I in a fight, who would you put money on? <laughs> You shouldn't be gambling. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what I'm going to ask you to do is put your hands up like this. And I'm going to ask, not that you just like push once, but I'm going to get you to apply constant pressure and keep pushing until I say stop. But it's important that you do stop when I say stop. <laughs> awesome. Anybody year 10 at the moment, or grade 10? Tough crowd? OK. Um, in year 10 in Australia, you learn in human bio that uh, evolutionary processes mean that we respond in one or two ways in panic situations. They both start with F, and both of them aren't words that Bill Maher was using. So <laughs> those words are fight or flight. So let's dramatise how people in the either must do or can't do camp kind of read this passage. This option would be, push when you're ready, bro, go. This option would be what? Flight. But after a while, people have enough and they push back. But here's the thing. Oh, you're being really kind, but <laughs> that's, that's really good for my self-esteem. But if, if you would actually push. You ready? Yep, let's go. So here's the thing. What happens if they're bigger than you? Like, significantly bigger than you. Stop. <laughs> what do you do if you don't have that kind of power? Do you know what terrorism is? When you're ready, Jeff, go. <laughs> dirty, very, very dirty. What Jesus invites us into, not just here, this isn't about a few favourite Bible verses for the hippies and activists and all the rest, so you can have your little bit, oh, Jesus is into that too. This is about the foolishness of the cross. This is about the centre of Christianity, that on the cross, how God deals with evil by grace, the grace that saves us, is the grace that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to live. And instead of a doormat response where we're pushed around our whole lives or we push back, because when we push back, I end up looking just like who? The cycles of alcoholism and abuse in my neighbourhood. Do you know in, in, in the places where I, I've lived the last 10 years or so, young people who are threatened by gangs, do you know what they often do to avoid the threat of gangs? They join another gang. What Jesus saves us from is these vicious cycles of becoming what we hate. What Jesus brings us out of and liberates us in this exodus journey of grace is well, Nietzsche or Nietzsche, depending on which university you went to, would put it that we become the dragon we wish to slay. Or Bono would put it, we become the monster so the monster does not overtake you. But what Jesus invites us into is instead of pushing back and looking just like it or being walked all over. Jeff, push me against the back. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That was good. Thanks, Thanks bro. Thank what? Round of applause for Jeff. He did great. <laughs> what Jesus fights us into is something where we stand our ground where we no longer let them name us as victim, but we demand our dignity in such ways that not only do we remember that we are a child of God, we help create situations where they can encounter the Holy Spirit and discover that they are a child of God. My goodness, this is such exciting news for our world at war at the moment during our unprecedented ecological crisis in a reality where 950 million people will go to bed hungry tonight while 37 wars wage around the world, while we sit here this morning. And we sit here with a message that is the hope of the world. And the world waits for the church not to just talk about Jesus being the way, but for the church to live the way of Jesus, so that we're not just a clanging gong or a tinkling cymbal, but we embody the love that has saved us and invite people into that love.